Why did it count backwards? I oh, know that we're now recording. <laughs> what? Hello, Captain. <laughs> oh, what do I? Come fly with me. Let's fly. Let's fly. <laughs> what are we going to talk about? I don't know. So leadership, life, and everything else. Yeah. And we're live. No, we are recording again. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome aboard, Captain and the Clown. Today's destination. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> today's destination, resilience? No, no I don't know. You don't like today's no. destination? Oh, I like it. Today's destination, resilience. <laughs> Hi, Michelle. Hi, Guy. <laughs> Captain. And the Clown. <laughs> um, Okay. So we uh still up in Darwin. We are. Yeah, we went to Parap Markets this morning. Yeah, a big recommendation. Take cash, which is because uh, not many people take cash. A sun hat. Yes. What? Well, lots of water. A or portable a fan. air conditioner. <laughs> and <laughs> you, a smile. Yeah. Yeah, because everyone's friendly. Up they here, were aren't very they? friendly. Lovely. They were very friendly. Mm. Yes, considering it's just the start of the wet season. Um, yeah. Yep. I wonder how it'll be in a month or so. Mm-hmm. But yeah. No, very nice people. So we're going to talk about resilience because yesterday uh, I was running a resilience workshop and mm. you got to you came along and did a fantastic little talk um, inside the, inside the, the course. Yeah, but it was a great reminder and it was well received. Mm. I, I really, um, you know, a lot of people um, were open to uh, more resilience, like what it is, yeah, um, how resilience works so what's your definition of resilience my definition of resilience well it's changed so i've recently read a book Mm -hmm. um by nasim nicholas taleb and And anti-fragile yes yes recommended it to you Mm. um it's not light reading but it's great changing the idea of of um resilience so i used to think that resilience was the opposite of fragile Mm, so bending not breaking that's it yeah Mm. and and i suppose that is but it always comes back to the original what it was so that Mm. the bend not break Mm. um but i i so that i suppose is resilience that what i would aim for now Mm. is anti-fragile so the opposite of fragile which means so fragile being easy to break yep. and then once it's broken that's it it's useless yep. so to speak um and then resilience would be coming back to the original state hmm. anti-fragile so if you've broken but it's made you better or stronger or stressed yeah. yes it's, yes it's come back stronger that's right i love that yeah. yeah and as human beings we're we're under stress so there's good stress yep. and there's a certain amount of stress we need yep. but it's that um Getting using the stress for good, I suppose, yeah. makes well, seeing, me stronger. Yeah, because I, I used to uh, aim for resilience mm. because I, I wanted when things came along, when stressors came along uh, that affected me, that I would bounce back, I'd mm. go back to normal. But reading that book and the concepts in that book, every complex system, when there's a stressor, it doesn't come back the same. It comes back stronger. Mm. And I guess what, one of the best ways to look at it is um, if you plant a tree in a biodome, that tree will grow and grow and grow, but it will eventually fall over. The reason why it falls over is because it hasn't been exposed to any stressors like wind. Mm. And, and when a, a tree is exposed to wind, it grows very deep roots to hold on, hold on to the ground. Yeah. But because in a biodome there's no wind, the tree will grow and grow and grow and grow as, it w- as it's meant to do. Mm. But because it's got no stressors uh, being the wind, it doesn't grow the deep roots and just falls over. And so... It's not becoming resilient, that tree. It's actually becoming anti-fragile. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So I, I love that concept. Well, even just like to use it um, in current situations. So with, you know, a lot of people lo- have lost their jobs, been made redundant, mm. etc., due COVID or, or um, other, you know, other factors, reasons, yeah. other factors. And so that thing of the, of being unemployed, mm. the, the fear was what can I do? I'm unemployed. I'm back to square one. Yep. But you're never back to square one no. because you're... You have new skills. That's right. Experience, experience. skills, etc. So you're, you know, square one plus three squares. Yeah. So you're, you, you know, your new normal or falling back is never back as far as when you no. originally started. So yeah. you are stronger. You're anti-fragile. You're, you're actually... I don't know about that word and, and it's anti-fragile. not... Anti-fragile. Yes. It's not even a word yet. Oh, no, it's a term. It's a term. It, it is a term. Um... But yeah, it's it's 
I, I like the idea. I, mm, I really getting do. Getting stronger it, from adversity. Yeah. Rather yeah. than returning to where you were. That's right. I guess, I guess it'd be important to dissect stress, though, to start with. Because if, if that's what we're being resilient or anti-fragile from, mm. it'd be important to understand what stress is. Because you can't be stronger unless you've experienced stress. So um, stress, many people, if you ask them, what is stress? They'd say, oh, it's, it's you know, feeling frustrated. Well, no, the frustration feeling is the result of a stressor. Yeah. But I looked it up one time and I found this fantastic definition. Stress is inappropriate responses to real or imagined threats, whether emotional or physical. Yeah. No, that's true. Yeah. So yep, yep, if, I you, agree if you with dissect that. that a little bit, uh, inappropriate responses, not responding appropriately mm. to real or imagined threats, whether emotional or physical. So let's look at our threats. What percentage of our threats are these days physical? I don't mm, know about you, but many. I didn't see any lions or tigers wandering around the parrot markets. So, no. So the majority of our stressors are emotional. Yeah. And then real or imagined, if you think about it, right now in this moment, you don't have any problems. All no. problems exist in the future or the past, That's so right. therefore don't exist at all, Yeah, which is very deep. So most of our stressors these days are imagined and they're emotional stressors. And so resilience these days isn't from being attacked by marauding tribes coming over the hill trying to steal your resources. It's, you know, I've got too many emails or <laughs> I've got a tight deadline with my boss. Yeah, yeah. yeah or, or the, you know, mortgage is due or the rent's due exactly. or interest rate rises, etc. So mm. they are a stress. They're coming. Yeah. And at the time, you know, the effect that it has, yeah. physical, etc., is real. Yeah. Um, but, but it feels real. It does. Yes, it, does. it feels real. But it has a real effect, though, physically. Mm. Physically, absolutely, because your mind can't differentiate between what you vividly imagine and actual reality. Yeah. So, yeah, when we think about our stressors, even though they're not real, the effect in our body is real yes. and we go into fight or flight. Yeah. So resilience is really about learning to reduce our stressors by, I guess, the first thing, changing your mindset about things. Mm. Yeah. yeah, yeah. If you, That's right. If you can change the way you think about it to reduce or eliminate completely that fight or flight mm. um, response. So change your mindset. Yeah. Yeah. And what, one of the things I love talking about when I moved from Albury Wodonga, which is in the country, mm -hmm. to Sydney, the thing that annoyed me the most was traffic. So I'd, I'd be sitting there in a car and I'm all frustrated on Parramatta Road and we're not going anywhere. And I remember one coming home one day and I thought to myself, you know, I was really stressed there. Mm. And then I realized, you know, I teach this stuff. So I thought, well, wh why am I stressed? Well, it's because I was thinking that Traffic is a nightmare, but traffic is just an opportunity to spend time in a car doing something you enjoy. Mm. You can't do anything else. You can't control the traffic. You can't control how fast the traffic's moving. And so what I did is I realized that traffic's just simply an opportunity to, to, to do something I love. And what I love is learning, as the same as you. And so I just started to listen to audiobooks books and podcasts in my car. Yeah. And now I love traffic. Yeah. 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 So all my stress disappeared simply because I changed my perspective about it text messages yep so i'm not a fan because you can read anything you want into you it any tone that's right yeah that's it the tone mm. whatever you're feeling your emotion at the time yeah um it's then you know that's the voice that you read it with projected and onto the text yeah absolutely and so i would getting a, a text from a person or getting text messages from a person and my i immediately went into fight or flight like i'd hear the ding mm. and <laughs> round one <laughs> yeah yeah that's right that so that text message would come in and I was ready for battle, you mm. know, and I hadn't even read it, mm. but I was immediately, that was my response. And it was a stressful thing. It was my body, you know, I'd constrict everything and, um, and I'd almost get a sick feeling mm. in my, in my gut. And I had to stop, um, giving that text messaging that power over my body and more content that was there that's than, right that's that right there. so um yeah similar to confidence with the feedback thing it and information i had to look at the text message hmm. as though it was just written and now you know tone of voice can change it up and so just highlight almost highlight in my mind the important facts hmm. and then take the emotion out of it and hmm. that reduced the stress for me yeah. and um 
And then I suppose as far as resilience goes, I could then be a normal human. <laughs> yeah. And respond differently. I could. Yeah, 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 yeah. Because when we're not resilient, we, we can become very reactive rather oh, than abso- proactive in our absolutely, responses. Absolutely, yes. Another perspective change that I had, and it was quite a big one, COVID affected all of us and a lot of people lost jobs or stopped working and you know our my industry the the training and speaking and our industry the, the speaking industry shut down mm. yeah we weren't yeah. doing conferences we weren't doing keynotes we weren't doing what 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 we love doing uh and so i had a lot more time on my hands at home and at first it was stressing me it was getting to me and then i realized i had an opportunity to use that time that i typically wouldn't have to do things that i wouldn't have time to do so i read a lot more but the best thing about those those years where we weren't really busy with work, if, if at all, it was to spend time with my son. Mm. And so I, I treasure that now. He's nine. And I, I had two years of good quality, solid time with my son that I would not have had if it wasn't for COVID. Mm. And so at first I was very stressed because I was focusing on the fact that COVID was stopping me doing things I love. Then I changed my perspective. And now I look at it as a fantastic opportunity. It's, it was obviously a horrible period of time for many people, losing loved ones and, and the lockdowns. The isolation. People, the isolation yeah. and everything that people endured. It was, it was horrible to, to think of what people were going through. Mm. But we can look back at, at it now and I, I certainly have changed my perspective. It gave me some fantastic opportunities. I certainly learned to meditate more. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I've meditated for oh since I was a teenager, I suppose. But I it was a, a good reminder because my my um you know aviation career ended yeah. and um I was attached my ego was attached to that identity. But I had that opportunity to sit with myself, Mm. with my ego and process it. And again, similar to you, my kids, you know, I'd had years and years of um, being away for work and now I was able to be at home for my children wholly, solely, um, not miss anything. And it's just that that lovely reconnection with them. And, And I know... They um, they appreciated it, and lockdown wasn't that hard because I did have my kids. Yeah. Um, and yeah, just playing games and mm. just Spend chatting. Quality time. That's right. Well, we were going through renovations at the time want. as well, so it was we were living in my bedroom basically. Wow. So for um, at twelve months, which was fun. We yeah. kind of did it like well, a you've set, you you you've labelled it as fun rather than labelling labelling it as a chore, I guess. Yeah. 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 Which is a great perspective change. Yes. 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 I, I was. Uh, I had a funny incident with a, a lady in, in a course years ago. I said, "Does anyone have a perspective that it's causing them stress that they can't change?" And she said, "Yeah, I've got one for you." I said, "What's that?" She said, "Getting the kids ready for school in the morning. It's stressful." And I said, "Okay, so." Um, Tell me more. She said, well, I get up in the morning, I, I, I put their clothes on their bed, I, I put the wheat picks in the bowl, I yell at them to come down and eat their wheat picks, and five minutes later they haven't eaten their breakfast and I'm dragging them to school and getting the kids ready for school. Stressful. She said, fix that. <laughs> everyone else in the course was laughing because she was quite passionate about it. And I said to her, all right, well, um, challenge accepted. Mm-hmm. I said, uh, what about this? Why don't you look at it like this? Kids are here to teach us how to slow down time. Kids operate on a different time scale to adults. You remember school, nine till three o'clock was yeah. just such a long time. But Drag. nine to five goes like that. Monday to Friday, we, we, you know, we're just about to put up the Christmas tree and I feel like I've just taken it down. Yeah. And um, so we, we, uh, we I, I said to her, um, what about this? How about just get up a little bit earlier? So, so when it was my turn to get my son ready for daycare, I'd just wake up 15 minutes earlier. I'd go into his room, I'd open his blinds, I'd get out a couple of T-shirts so he's got a choice, set up his little train set and he's woken up now. So, mate, do you want to play trains? He goes, yeah. So we play trains for a couple of, you know, five minutes. Five minutes of trains for a kid, it's like hours. Yeah. yeah. And then I said, mate, which T-shirt you want to wear? So he's got a choice, he feels in control. We go downstairs, mate, do you want porridge or wheat bix? And he gets to choose what he has for breakfast. And then I say, hey, do you want to go to school a little bit early and play on the equipment? And he goes, oh, okay okay, dad. And so we go to school early and he's got control over the fact that we're playing together, not rushing. We're in his time frame. And then I'd say, see you, mate, tonight when I get home, more trains. You go, yeah. And that was a great start to the day. But if I ever 
tried to get my son into my time frame. Come on, mate, get out of bed. That's got a meaning. Come on, come on, put your shoes on. Mm. Other foot, mate. And, and he'd be, oh, I don't want to go to school. And I'm so, guilty of that. Yeah. I'm very guilty of that. <laughs> so I, I, I said to her, kids are here to teach us how to slow down time. And she said, oh, oh, I'll try that. <laughs> but then about six weeks later, she, she contacted me and she said, oh, you've changed my life. I said, I haven't. You have. She said, oh, but when you said that in the, in the training session, I hated you. I said, I know. She said, how did you know? I said, I was looking at your face. <laughs> <laughs> it was that obvious. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She, oh, she was giving me the death stares. And I said, can I guess why you didn't like what I said? She said, sure. I said, how many people have you told how stressful it is getting the kids ready for school? She said, everyone. I, I, that's all I talk about at book mm. club and in the morning. And I said, so when I said what I said, you felt that I was telling you you were wrong. And she said, yeah. I said, I wasn't. Yeah. I was saying there's one way to look at it and you get this result. There's another way to look at it and you get a different result. It's about choosing a different result. It's not yeah. about right or wrong. It's about changing your perspective. Yes. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that's right. Well, yeah, the, even just 15 minutes earlier isn't – it's not hard. No. no and, yeah. Uh, yeah, although those people that, you know, struggle to get out of bed, it mm. could seem like a big thing. but. Yeah. Just it's do it. Not, nah. It's a mindset shift. That's right. Yeah, just go to bed 15 minutes earlier, wake up 15 minutes earlier and slow down in the morning because kids operate on a different time scale. Yeah. Yeah. What's yeah. another perspective? I'm going to put you on the spot. Yeah. 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 Do you have another perspective that you've changed that's re- reduced your stress levels or changed the way you see things, which helps you be more resilient to, to events? Uh, yeah, probably the traffic thing is a big one because I um, – when I take my kids to school, it's a mm-hmm. 30, 35 minute trip. Yeah. And uh, yeah, we listen to podcasts or music. And then on the way home, the other side of it, we chat about the day, we listen to music. It's it's good. It's a nice opportunity that we didn't have before. Yep. With um, school being, you know, only a couple of minutes away. So you moved further away. We yep. did, yeah. And it's, so that that's a nice thing because I... Uh, you know, the first couple of times we did it, it was we did it begrudgingly and thinking, oh my goodness, I've got months of this ahead before they go mm. change schools next mm. year. And um, but yeah, having that mind shift change, and and my kids love it too. Mm. So they tell their kids, their, uh, their kids, <laughs> yeah. they've got kids. No, they, <laughs> they tell their friends yep. that you know every morning on the way to school they go over the Harbour Bridge and. Other get the kids with their friends are like no way you know that's really cool and yeah. and so they they now have that thing of it's cool they yeah. you know they they do that every morning and um and then we we come back home but probably um, even my attitude to exercise in the morning and getting up early yeah I've always been a morning person mm, same. but the making it an hour earlier. Um, mm. The daylight savings shift was a little bit of a struggle there for a week, yeah. but um, got there. And so getting up at 5 a.m. Mm-hmm. is, and I used to always get up at 6, but 5 a.m. gives you so much more time. So doing breath work, yeah. doing lemon water, exercising, so a walk. Um, so a morning routine. Morning routine, definitely. Mm. And it's reduced the stress because I know exactly what's going to happen. Yep. And same with the kids. Making your bed? Ma- absolutely. That's yep. the first thing. So, you know, tumble out of bed some so mornings. So many people and talk about this these days, don't they? Yeah, yeah. Well, even I'm on my knees basically because my back's a bit dodgy. And I, you know, pull up the, the covers and my partner's on the other side pulling up the covers. Yep. And it's just... It, it makes it easy. One less thing to think about. Plus, I come home, the bed looks amazing yep. with the 50,000 pillows. <laughs> <laughs> oh. What is it with, with ladies and pillows? I, I have to ask. What is the function of all these extra pillows? Oh, it pillows looks like it's a display home. Oh, it's yes, like a yes, display yes, home. Yes, okay, yes, yes, That's nice. right. <laughs> no function at all because you can't dare put your head on the pillow because it, it or on the cushion because it would cost so much money. Okay. But the... Um, just just doing that routine, uh, so my little boy, he really, really does well on routine. And if it's something outside of the scope of a routine, it throws him. And I probably myself felt a little bit like that. Because he some, feels out of control. Out of control, definitely. So it's that control thing. Mm-hmm. So if you know what's coming next to a point um, or you can put time towards, you know, allocate a time to this, you know, one hour is this and anything can happen within that, but it's, that's dedicated to that, uh, you know, activity, then 
um, yeah, it's just le- less decisions and, you know, Steve Jobs did the same, Elon Musk does the same, you know, wears the same outfit, etc. Yeah. does exactly the same thing, puts his, you know, shoes and socks on the same way every day. It's that routine, not having to think about it. Which then saves your decision-making muscle. For That's right. And also things. reduces stress because yep. it's all, you know, what's going to happen. It's that control thing, yeah, like you said. Yeah, absolutely. I've got a morning routine as well. And it, it's the best start of the day. It makes you resilient for what's... If anything comes up during the day and you've had a great start to the day, you're much more resilient than if you've just... Oh, I've got to get to bed now because you, you slept through your alarm or you, or you forgot to set your alarm and you, you know, start the day in a fight or flight sort of state. Yeah. So yeah. much better to have a morning routine and own the morning. Yeah. I do the breath work as well and meditate during the breath work and, and make sure that I'm setting myself up for success during the days. Another thing I do at the end of the day, I call life university, is I look back through the day and I see if there's anything that uh, I've done or if I've, if I've reacted in a way that I aren't proud of or if I've reacted in... in so the difference between reacting and, and acting, so I like to be proactive rather than reactive. Mm. What I mean by that is if something happens, I don't want to react straight away. Mm. What I want to do is I want to pause and then think yeah, and then choose my response. Yes. And that's something I'm constantly working on because being a, an insecure little kid, I, I, I found myself to be quite reactive. Yes. And so at the end of every day, I just look at how I went during the day. Where did I react in a stressful way? Well, so it also where... does take confidence to be able to stop, yep. pause, yep. to think about your response. Mm. And it can be practiced and it can be learned. And it's powerful because instead of being the victim and blaming mm. whatever happened, you now realize that you're in charge of all of your responses. Yeah. And so, yeah, my, my routine is at the end of the day to look at the day and think, okay, did I behave in the way I wanted to, be, wanted to behave in a resilient way? So mm. if something bad happens, something happens that you weren't expecting, something left field comes in that typically gives you a bit of a shock or uh, a bit of stress... What I want to do in those moments is pause mm. and then choose the best response. Yeah. And so if I ever find that I haven't done that, at the end of the day, I just look back at, at it and I think, okay, what will I do differently next time? And then as I fall asleep, I've programmed my mind so that in the future, if that sort of event happens again, I'm more likely to behave in a less reactive way and therefore I'll be more resilient and more proactive in the way I respond to stressors. Oh, that actually that that makes sense. I've had situations, I don't know if you have, where someone said something to you and like half an hour later after oh, I, that person's that. gone past, it's like, oh, I should have said this. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. I wish I'd said this. Absolutely. Yes, yes. Yeah. Well, yeah, that's your opportunity to think, all right, in the future. So rather than I used to try and rewrite history, I used to yeah. go back in my mind, oh, I should have done that. Rather than thinking it like that, what I do now is, okay, if that happens again, mm. this is how I'm going to adjust. Yeah. And so that's you being proactive into the future rather than reactive. Sounds again. like training for the simulator, which is what we do for flight. So yeah. if, if uh, you know, a, an emergency happens, we've practiced it, we've trained for it, we've mm. gone over it, we've dissected it so yeah. that if it does ever happen for real, then, you know, it's not the, the shock of never seen it before. Mm. You've actually practiced it you know armchair armchair flying that's right and you can do that with anything same with you know doing speeches on stage Mm. uh any sort of training even you're going you know out to meet someone and you can kind of run through and rehearse a little bit um what you know how you'd like the day to happen or and it's that feeling of control again the um basically the resilience you're taking less less um Actually, that's not at all. <laughs> <laughs> that's okay. <laughs> right, rewind. And back to you, Michelle. <laughs> so, all right, we, um, we've spoken about resilience today. Uh, I think we're getting to the end of the, the podcast, but I, I think there's a lot more here that we could talk about. Oh, we could unpack yeah, a lot. But probably lot. the takeaway from today mm. would be if you can create a routine, yeah. then the resilience in that is that you've got something to fall back on, mm. to go back to. Yeah. Um, and that's a stable in your foundation. Con- correct. And yeah. you're in control of that to a yeah. degree. And the other 
key takeaway is your mindset, your perspective. Yes. Just analyze your perspective on things because stress isn't what happens to you, but rather how you choose to view mm. what happens to you. And Nothing react. is good nor bad, but thinking makes it so. Thanks, Shakespeare. Yes. Yes. Excellent. Okay. So how okay. do we sign off these podcasts? I don't know. We still haven't <laughs> figured it out. I <laughs> think we just press stop on the recorder. Yeah. All right. Lovely to see you again, Michelle. <laughs> Love you. See you too. Okay. Take Bye-bye. care, everyone. Bye-bye. Have a great week. So, Michelle, where can they find us? Captainandtheclown.com Where you'll find links to our websites for keynote speaking and corporate training. Yes, that's captainandtheclown.com <laughs> Well, that was fun. That was fun. <laughs> the, You're such a clown. The clown. <laughs> Lady captain. Lady captain. <laughs> and who's going to listen to this? Maybe our mums. Thanks, mum. Thanks, mum.